Well, welcome to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, I want to share with you a deeper understanding of what The Secret Place is. And I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth. I truly pray that this message is such a now word that it blesses you, that it inspires you, and it produces such an impact in your life. And I thank you, Father God, for a word in season, a fresh download from heaven that imparts faith, that penetrates, impacts each person listening, and that produces in their lives, Father, the purpose of heaven. I thank you that you be blessed and encouraged and strengthened in the name of Jesus. And I thank you that in all things, Jesus, you alone would be glorified. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. Father, I thank you. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Now, I've shared a lot on The Secret Place. And I love always to spend time and just hear what the Lord has to say. To give me fresh and greater insight and the other night he awoke me and he began to share a message and i want to share that with you and he started with matthew 6 21 and it talks about that uh, where your treasure is there your heart will be also and he said to me that your secret place is the treasury of your life and he started to explain to me the call from heaven is that we would have him as the very treasure that we are pursuing because that which you set your eyes on, that which you focus on as a treasure, impacts the trajectory of your life. Listen to this. In Proverbs 14, verse 14, the backslider in heart will have his fill of his own ways. In other words, those that are drawn back because they look at things in the world that are earthly, uh, and it will draw them towards that because it becomes the treasure's of their heart and it can be your emotions your feelings uh your uh, opinions and everything else but it turns as this but a good man will be satisfied with his jesus explained that a good man out of his good treasure produces good things and we know that jesus said that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks so that treasury of your heart is so important. And the treasures that you pursue and that you seek after, the things that you declare as of most value, the things that you fix your eyes on and that you set your life after. You can see somebody that is consumed or obsessed with something by their lifestyle. We talk about the secret place being that which you do behind the scenes. And I want to go further because it impacts not just what you do behind the scenes, but it starts to consume you to such that you do it publicly. Because Jesus said that we, if we confess him before men, he'll confess us before the Father. So we've got to have a strong uh, private life of pursuit. But it's built upon that he becomes such a treasure in our lives that it, in the public life, we also live out this pursuit of him. We're not ashamed of him, but rather we are absolutely consumed by him. In Ephesians 1.3, it says, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. And I want us to fully understand that God always blesses us with more than enough. He never desires to give us just enough, but it's always more than enough. And he's blessed you with all spiritual blessing, not some, but all. There's nothing lacking with God. There's nothing missing with God. And so the call to come into the treasury of his heart and to receive from the treasury of heaven is to see that every one of your needs is met. But it comes and it's built upon us seeing him as the treasure of our lives. Smith Wigglesworth said this, How exhaustless is the treasure house of the Most High? How near God is to us when we are willing to draw nigh. And how He comes with refreshings to us when our hearts are attuned and desire Him only. For the desires of the righteous shall be granted. What is the desire of your heart? What is the pursuit of your life? Because as we've seen from Proverbs 14, that the trajectory of your life is built upon the treasury of your heart, the secret place. Because that's where we store that which we treasure, that which matters most in our lives. For some people, it's things. For some people, it's your hurts, your emotions. 
For us, it is meant to be Jesus. He must be our all in all. And everything else must bow to that. When we come to that place where our eyes are no longer focused on us or on earthly things, and we are raised up and seated with Him in heavenly places, and we see the things, the treasures that are our eternal. That's why Jesus said, Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, which is a heavenly thing, and these spiritual things which are eternal, that we would lay out for ourselves treasures in heaven where there's no decay or destruction that we see on the earth. In Ephesians 1, verses 15 through 21, For this reason, I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which exists among you, and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of revelation, of wisdom, uh, of revelation of the knowledge of Him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, so that you will know the hope of His calling. What are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? And what is the surpassing greatness of His power towards us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of His might, which He brought about in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the one to come, so that He is the absolute. He is absolute authority, He is the highest, and He is the greatest. And our heart, our mind, our whole being should be focused on Him. And it starts by that which is the greatest treasure in your life, that which occupies the throne of your affection, your imagination, that which consumes the secret place, the treasury of your heart. Because out of your heart flows the issues of life. And you find that your heart is so important because it's with the heart we believe. And when we believe in the heart, it changes everything. It brings us into the new life. It brings us into all that God has for us. Listen to this. Smith explained, My heart's desire is that I bring you again to a banquet, that wonderful reserve, that great blessed day of appointment for us with the King, that we may believe that all the precious promises are yes and amen to us who dare believe. That God has such an appointment with you. Now we have to understand this because, and I pray that I can fully, accurately share this. God has such a call and He sees you. Look at Abraham. God saw in Abraham and He drew him and He called him, had an appointment with him. And when God meets with you with every call, with every visitation, there is an impartation, there is a transfer, and it starts with the capturing of the secret place of your heart, where Jesus, the Lord our God, becomes that treasure. And as we get a hold of Him, He becomes the treasure. All of a sudden, God begins to inspire in us something that we see, and we begin to ask that brings forth in our lives, as we dare believe and dare ask, the very purpose of heaven, and brings forth in our lives satisfaction and fulfillment. God wants you fully satisfied. He wants you fully blessed. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. You think about Abraham. God meets with him and begins to speak to him. He doesn't fully get it at once. And it takes a visitation after visitation that through your descendants, through your seed. Well, Abraham sure thought about that, but never fully comprehended, but it begins to grow in him. And you find that because as God begins to work in your heart and you begin to get consumed, caught up, because he begets bigger with every visitation, Abraham got a greater revelation of the name of the Lord our God, of who He was, and of His greatness, of how awesome He was. And God wants that with you, so that with every day, every opportunity that you get, you take and you seek His face, He begins to reveal Himself and His glory to you, uh, His greatness, and how you can trust Him. And He becomes bigger in your life. And you start to start to see this 
purpose, the hope of the calling that He has for you, that He sees and desires to do something in you. Now, let me continue here. So I want you to get in a definite place, daring to ask God for something that shall be the means of stimulating your life forever. You think about the disciples. You go back to that time period. I'm sure there were great sports heroes and other great leaders. And at that time, they captured the minds of the people. They were great. They were glorious. But they faded. And they became nothings and nobodies. But the disciples, who were nothing at the time, if anything, they were the scum of the earth. They were the hated. They were the rejected. But with every encounter with the living God, something was happening and they were lifted, changed, transformed, and they became history makers. They impacted not just their generation, but every generation since. And what they did will continue to impact throughout eternity. Abraham was a nothing and a nobody. And it had to be every continuous encounter, that first one, where God captured him. And all of a sudden, Abraham saw the Lord God as such a treasure that he began to pursue him, began to make a step, and every step was going after the treasure that was greater than his family, greater than that inheritance, because it was something he saw in the Lord God. And God kept meeting with him. And every time God met with him, God revealed himself even more. And God wants to meet with you. And he wants to take you always higher and higher and, and demonstrate his greatness towards you. So that you start off as a nothing and a nobody, like Abraham, like the disciples. But you end up as somebody in him because you become like him. Because all of a sudden, the treasure that's in your heart is him. And he begins to reproduce himself in you and through you. Because remember what we said that the backslider, let me continue to read, the backslider in heart will have his fill of his own ways. Because that which is in the secret place, the treasures, reproduce according to their kind. If you sow to the flesh, you from the flesh reap death. But if we sow to the Spirit, from the Spirit we produce life. When you get a hold of the Lord your God inside of you, He reproduces and He's bigger and He's greater than you. He's not restricted to your limitations. Join with me in Mark 6, verses 39 through 43. Now, let me give you a little bit of history on this. Jesus had just seen the death of John the Baptist. What a major blow. This impact. We see that, for I think it's in the Gospel of John, that Jesus pulls aside. He wants to be alone. It, it, it hit him, okay? And he tells his disciples to come with him. He tells them to take rest, and they go to a secluded place to just get away from the people. Have you been there? Have you gone through something? And listen, I just need my space. I need my time. So Jesus gets alone. But the people follow now, most of us would turn around and say, hey, hold on a minute. I need my space. I have my rights. Give me time. But Jesus, because the Father was the treasure in his life, and out of that, you and I became that treasure. He saw us through the eyes of the Father and how precious we were to the Father. Greater than himself, greater than his rights, greater than his needs. He looks and he sees the people as sheep without a shepherd. And it broke him more than his emotions, more than what he was going through. See, most of us have the wrong thing in our heart and we're dictated to, held captive by the wrong thing. Jesus begins to minister. And he said he taught them many things. And you'll find that with everything that God does, he teaches, it edifies, it lifts. Because it comes forth from the very treasury of his heart, which is from the Father. From the great treasury of heaven. And that treasury has got always more than enough to meet every single need and to change you and to lift you if you will receive it. His word. 
is that force. It's the thing that overcomes. It's the Word. And the Word has the ability to produce uh, uh, the very purpose of heaven in your life. It has the ability to bring forth God's nature into you. It has the ability uh, to recreate. It has such power in it. And God watches over His Word to perform it. If we could just lay and understand the Word, uh, when it comes forth out of the very treasury of the Father's heart, spoken in the secret place, because you've been captured by Him, and He has your heart, and He pours in such rich treasures, promises to you, it impacts you. It changes your whole life forever. It changes the trajectory. It sets you free. It brings you out of things. So listen to this. Mark 6, 39 through 43. And he commanded them all to sit down by groups on the green grass. <laughs> I, I got to stop there. They're in a wilderness. It's dry. It's barren. But you know that everywhere that you come and you sit in the secret place with the Lord, he turns it green. He can take all the dry wilderness in your life and make it green if we will simply be obedient. As they obeyed and sat down in obedience, in a wilderness, God caused it to become green. God will cause that which is dead in your life to come back to life. It has to because of the very nature of it. Because out of the treasury, life coming forth. Now it says they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties and he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking towards heaven he blessed the food and broke the loaves and he kept giving them to the disciples to set before them. And he divided up the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied and they picked up the twelve baskets of the broken pieces and also the fish. Now, let's just think for a minute here. Jesus said to the disciples, feed these people. He put it on the people, and he'll tell you because of that call, do this. And you say, God, it's too big for me. It's too great for me. I don't have it. Like the disciples, we don't have it. I don't have the sufficiency. I don't have enough of this. I don't have enough time. I'm wore out. I'm stretched thin. It's beyond me. That's the glorious place where God calls you now to come because He's imparted something in you and He calls you into the treasury to receive from Him because He is able. As they gave Him what they had, their insufficiency, as the disciples said, Here, here's what we got, here's the limit, this is all we've got, take it. Jesus, not, you know that Jesus didn't look at their insufficiency. Jesus was not fixed on the shortage of the lack. He was focused on the Father. He was looking up to the treasure, to the treasury of the Father's heart. And he understood and saw how the Father cared for the people and how the Father wanted to meet the need of every single person. Because when we grasp this and we start to see things in the light of the heart of the Father, then you can ask and know that I, the Father's heard me because I'm asking according to His will. I'm asking according to His very heart, according to that which is of a treasure. And you don't think that that which is most important, that which is of a treasure in His heart, He doesn't want to see birthed and done on the earth? When we lay hold of that, so Jesus looking up, you know, there's a scientific law that says the things, if you look in something, it doesn't change. And we're always looking on our insufficiency, our lack, our want, our problem, our situation. Instead of getting into worship, instead of getting focused on the Lord God, looking up to the treasury of heaven, looking up, see what occupies your treasure, the treasure of your life. The things, are we looking earthly? Are we looking to heaven? See, for so long we've always been taught things and we've been focused earthly we've been taught the 10 laws of how to prosper and do all this and God wants you blessed 
We see that in the Word, and we've taken that, but we've been focused on earthly things. But as you understand that that treasury then becomes focused on earthly things instead of Him, and we wonder why the church fell asleep, lost its power, lost its focus. But as we make Him that treasury, seeking first His kingdom and His righteousness, all these things given all to us. Because these things now enable us to do that which He called us to do. The Word says He's given us the power to get wealth. Why? See, we stop there. But it says to establish His covenant for His purpose to produce on the earth what's in His treasury, what's in His heart. And if we can get so in alignment with Him that all of a sudden the Holy Spirit inspires into you a call, a purpose, a vision that you step out with, it changes everything. Smith said this, I am so desirous that you should get so stimulated with the prospect, prospective condition, then come into a realizing condition because that is what God wants you to have. To get so moved by the power of God to believe that the things you hear shall be yours. How do I know? Because I'm in alignment with the very heart of the Father. I see things from the perspective. The Word is so opened. The Father speaking the Word from the very heart, from His heart into mine. Those promises carry so much weight because they come from the heart. Have you ever got a letter that somebody sent from their heart to yours? I mean, you, you don't want to get rid of that. That letter touches you, changes you. That word, those words you remember, you treasure. There's that word treasure again. And in the secret place, the Father taking the, pri the precious word, taking precious promises that you've heard a thousand times, but now spoke him from his treasury of his heart to yours. Because why? He is your everything. He is your all in all. Your whole life is built around him, consumed with him. He said so many people um, have great things because they're always on the line of thinking it was for someone else. I want you to know that God's word is for you. Sorry, some people great, would do great things, uh, but they think it's always for somebody else. God, you would answer this prayer for somebody else, but I'm not worthy. I'm not qualified. I'm not big enough. But there's a confidence that comes. There's a change that comes when you are in the secret place, in the deeper waters, where you've gone in, and now the Lord, you are the treasure of my life. And the Father says, you are my treasure. Here is the precious promises I have for you. Here's the vision and purpose I have for your life. Smith says, I want you to know that God's word is for you. And you are to make a personal application for all there is in the scriptures. See, now I'm asking like Abraham, like the disciples, because I know the very purpose of the Father for me. I may not know all the specific details, but I know the vision. I know His heart towards me, and I know I've called and I have a purpose. And like Abraham, I'm heading towards somewhere. And I hear Him speaking, and now it stirs in me a faith to ask and dare believe Him because we are now partners working together for his purpose. He backs it. 1 Corinthians 14, 12. So also you, since you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek to abound for the edification of the church. Everything God does is for edification, multiplication, and solidification. He wants to edify. And we get inside this that God always wants to build up, to lift up. He wants to take you from where you're at and lift you. When we come together as believers, He wants to meet and take us and lift us. The Word, the message preached, whenever flowing, 
of the Spirit in any person. It should lift people, not into some daydream, not into some thing of the flesh, but higher into Him, drawing Him closer into the very secret place of His heart, drawing to the place where they are consumed. And the only way I know of doing that is that I must disappear and He must appear. I have to find a way that somehow I empty me of me, that I take the time to say, God, these people are so precious, so wonderful. I see them through your eyes. And I stand in the gap crying out for them, pleading and interceding, looking up to heaven for them, broken for them. Jesus didn't drown and see those people say, you know what? I've had a long difficult day. I'm taking a break. I fed you spiritually all day. I'm worn out. Do you know how draining it can be to preach for hours when you're emotionally challenged? But he kept pouring out. His eyes were on the Father. And he said, what he saw the Father do, he did. His eyes, because the Father was the greatest treasure, and the Father looked and loves you. Cared for the people. So that what he wanted to do was always to edify, lift. That's why he doesn't just leave you. He lifts you into heavenly places. And then he wants to multiply. We see that right there. He takes your insufficiency, and he brings forth his sufficiency. It wasn't well. I was praying and said, God, I'm, not, I'm physically, it wasn't well. I can't pray. And he said, give me your insufficiency. Give me what you got. See, we have excuses while well, we can't. Give him what you got. Surrender him and let him take that insufficiency. Get your eyes on him and let him multiply. Psalm 115, may the Lord increase you, you and your children. Because he's a God who multiplies. Every time he met Abraham, you follow it. Every visitation with Abraham, he multiplied the revelation of who he was. Abraham got a greater revelation of the Lord our God and a greater revelation of the promise of the call. Greater revelation of the blessing. And God took this person, this man, and nothing and nobody, called on to bless you, make you a blessing. Going to give you a seed. That sounds good. But God wasn't done. And then it ends up, I'm going to give you nations. And through you all the earth shall be blessed. You can't get bigger than that. You and I stand here today because we stand because of the blessing through Abraham. And then it solidifies. We find then, of course, in Romans, where the Holy Spirit bears witness with you. And you're going to find the Father God always bears witness because He's speaking from His heart to yours that you are my child, you are a son, you are a daughter. I've given you an inheritance. Smith said, keep that definitely before your mind. Because whatever happens in a service, it means nothing to me without it. It's to edification or comfort or consolation. The very purpose of heaven. So if we're not producing, whether it's through the gift, the calls, the spiritual gifts, or anything, if it's not producing the heart of the Father, the treasure of heaven, where it edifies, comforts, and consolidates, consoles, sorry, then we've missed it. And we need to understand the importance of getting aside and allowing Him to consume the treasury of your heart. Smith said, if I use my own reasoning, you won't be edified. There's only one edification that's going to last, and it is spiritual. Inward revelation of Christ. Mind matter is no good without it is spiritually quickened through heart affections. So let us remember, it is more important that we should be filled with the Holy Ghost, that the Spirit should have its perfect control and way, than that we should be filled with the knowledge to no profit. I can go and I can prepare a wonderfully skilled message. We can see people operating in all kinds of gifts, all these things, they look good. 
And I've been in service where service after service, people have these encounters. But if that encounter is not changing you spiritually, if it's not getting a hold of the treasury of your heart and imparting something there, if it's not showing you a greater revelation and wonder of the Lord, demonstrating His glory that the heart is captured, then what good is it? If our services are not drawing people to Jesus, what good are they? If our lives don't demonstrate and draw people to Jesus, what good? We're not fulfilling the purpose of heaven. And that's where the treasury comes in, because we've been focused earthly instead of being focused upward. It starts with you and me, and we have a responsibility regarding our heart, a responsibility regarding the treasury of our hearts. It must belong to Him. He must occupy the throne of your affection and imagination. He must be become the everything, the all in all, the pursuit and the demonstration is your life, what you do. Because faith has an action to it. Smith said, you're not to be ignorant of the best gift God has arranged for you. You are to come into possession. We're desire, you know, regarding the gifts, it says you're to seek the best gift. It's not just about you. We don't look, give me the best gift so that my ministry looks good. I could think of sometimes, God, you know, let me flow right now in the gift of healing because you know what? It would be so powerful. It would just do my ministry wonders. But it's not about me. It's about the people. And it's about glorifying Jesus. It's about revealing Jesus. It's about bringing people to a greater intimacy with Jesus. My life must demonstrate that. And it starts by Him occupying. So that my need, I am satisfied in Him. Not in my feelings, not in my voice being heard. Not, You've got to hear. Do you understand what I'm going through? No. Jesus. Everything changed in my life with Jesus. Everything changed. He's become the treasure. And in this place of security, He pours forth into my life. Smith says, so the Holy Ghost is to make us ready for every perfect work. And so ready that opportunities are taken advantage of, just as much as if He were in the world. We must be in the world ready for the glorious, blessed anointing and equipment for service, that the power of hell shall not prevail, but we may bind the powers of Satan. That you, you, but I'm a nothing and a nobody. You are until He touches you. He, you are until He occupies the treasury of the secret place of your life. Where you allow Him to come in and say, God, I, I, I pursue you because you are. And you are the reward of those that diligently seek you. I don't come seeking a feeling, I'm just seeking you. And I trust that because of your word, your word is absolute authority, that if I keep pursuing you, you'll reward me with you. That's the treasure I'm seeking. So I'm seeking it when you're not looking, and I'm seeking it where you are. I don't want to put a show on. It's got to be real. And if it's real, God meets with you. And God takes you into a place where He so now lifts you that you are ready for every occasion. And God will put you in the right place at the right time and give you the right word because you're partners with Him. You think of all the great um, uh, prophets of the Old Testament. You think of the disciples, the apostles. They would turn up and God would speak through them and they would produce on the earth the oracles of heaven, the desire of the Father on the earth. Ezekiel, the Lord says, can these dry bones live? Ezekiel says, you know. God then did just say, God, then live, live. God said to Ezekiel, prophesy to them. 
you. Moses, you're at the Dead Sea. You've got to cross this Red Sea. How are you going to cross it? You do it, God. You do it. You lift up that rod. God working with, because no, Moses couldn't do it, but Moses through obedience, in partnership, in alignment with, where God purposed into him something. And as he stepped forth in obedience, Abraham stepping forth in obedience, the disciples speaking forth in obedience, the prophets declaring in obedience, not what they desired, but from the treasury of the Father produced on the earth the will of the Father and changed history and got a reward for it. Smith said, the Holy Spirit himself bringeth forth light and truth to edify and build up the church in the most holy faith that we might be ready for all activity in God. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon us to bring forth all which God has declared, ordained, that we should go forth bearing precious fruit and come forth rejoicing, singing, and harvesting together. You are anointed and appointed for such a time as this, and God has called you to bear not just some fruit, but much fruit, and that your fruit remains bigger than you, beyond you. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the bandwidth. It's going to stretch you. But that's the place where we have to come and say, God, I give you my insufficiency. And understand, I come because you put this in my heart. You are the treasure and you put a purpose in me. So I come into the treasury boldly to lay hold of so that on the earth your will, your purpose is brought forth to your glory. And I know because the treasure is him. Not seeking to lift my name up, not seeking that people are drawn unto me, not seeking any glory of myself, but seeking, which is what Jesus said. I don't seek to glorify myself. I seek to glorify the Father. My eyes, and He's a role model. Because Jesus, again, the secret place of His heart, the treasury, was focused on the Father. And the Father poured forth from His treasury into the Jesus. So that every need was met. Smith said, oh, to keep in the covenant place where you are hidden in Christ, where He alone is superseding, controlling, leading, directing, and causing you to live only for the glory of God. When you lay hold of this, when you choose to allow Him to become that treasure, those things that have been earthly, that your eyes have been focused on, Get your eyes off of them. You're going to have to make a decision to say no. No to the lower things and yes to the higher things. You're going to have to change the way you look. Do you want to look lower and earthly or higher? And you're going to have to do it by the help of the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to admit, Holy Spirit, I'm weak, I'm insufficient, I'm unable. But in my weakness, Holy Spirit, come and bring forth. Come and produce in and through me as I surrender and yield. Come and reveal Jesus. We've ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit too long. And He wants to come and produce in you and through you. Because He knows the deep things of the Father. And He wants to make them known to you and produce them in you. Change you. You don't have to live a life bound by the perversions of this world, captured by all those things, the pornography, the addictions. You can be set free in Christ. You've got a big Jesus, small devil. The problem is we're focused on our devil, and that's all we feed on, and he's taken possession of the treasury because the things that we desire are the wrong things. It's time that we allow Jesus to turn up into his temple. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And it's a time for the Holy Spirit to come and Him to clean house. To get rid of and tell you this goes. And when He says it goes, 
you agree and you let go. Stop hoarding the wrong things in your life and start laying hold of the treasures of heaven. Change direction. Turn around and fix your eyes on Jesus because you can remain in the place where your insufficiency will never be enough. You will never get yourself free because you'll always fall short. You'll always be in the place of frustration, bitterness, hurt, and regret. But if you allow the Holy Spirit today to come in and to do something in you, and you allow Him to come into the secret place, the treasury of your heart, and to challenge and remove, to convict and to purge and to cleanse the treasury, the things that have so consumed your life, some things you have to say no to. And as I said, and ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you to walk away. It may initially be a fight by fight, minute by minute fight, but you know what? You don't do it in your strength. You give thanks and fix your eyes on the Lord your God. Allow the Holy Spirit to do something in you and through you. Smith said this, the Lord wants you to be in a, a great place. The Holy Ghost having such control of your inner eyes to reveal the fullness of the Lord of life till Jesus is magnified tremendously by the revelation of the Holy Ghost, till He becomes Lord over all, over all your affections, your will, your purposes, your plans, and your wishes forever. The Holy Spirit will do that in you today, simply by asking, simply by surrendering, simply by giving over the keys of the treasury of your heart and saying it's yours. And the things you need to repent of, as he shows you, repent of. Do it now. And allow him to wash with the blood. You know, the secret place, the Holy of Holies, needs the sprinkling of the blood to be cleansed. It needs to be purified. Let the Holy Spirit do that today. Paul spoke in Ephesians 4. How the Lord our God ascended on high when he rose having won the full victory and he took captive captivity and he gave gifts to men you know that verse i've thought about a lot but listen to this paul was in captivity jesus took him out of captivity and took him into captivity and gave him gifts we want to be a blessing to the body we want to do something for the body of christ God has to take you out of captivity, and that starts by the treasure, treasure of your heart being given to Him. He is the keys. Let Him come in as you surrender. Allow Him such access to do in you and bring you out of the domain of darkness, out of where you're bound by, held captive to the rules and dictates of the enemy. And then let Him bring, bring to the place where you're captivated by Him. You're of no use until you come to the place of being captivated by the Lord God. Your eyes, because He becomes the treasure of your greatest pursuit, the pearl of greatest price. For God hath called thee for His own purpose. It is Christ who ordained thee, and being ordained by Christ, we go forth to bring forth much fruit. And God has been glorified when our anointing, or our covenant Christ is being reserved for God only. And we live and move for the glory of the exhibition of Christ. Too long my life, my ministry. Called of God, anointed of God, but serving my purpose. Thought I was doing a good thing, a right thing. Sincere, but sincerely wrong. Because he didn't have the complete treasury of my heart. Took a lot of repenting and a baptism of tears and a surrender and a yielding. And it took time of going after because God, you know, for every truth for which you stand, you're tested. You want this, you'll be tested for it. And it can take a time and you got to keep going after it because you make a commitment that God is the rewarder of those that diligently pursue him. Not turn up once. But God, I'm going to knock on this door and keep knocking. I'm going to be here every day seeking your face until you turn up, until my life is radically changed. And somewhere along the line, I look back 
and everything changed. I don't know where, but it was changed. And I look at how many things were taken out and removed from my life. How many things that had me captive per self-image, hurt, rejection. Struggled with them for years. Held captive by them. But he set me free. And he brought me into the greatest captivity that brings liberty. Him. I now live for him. Because he is my everything. He now is my all in all. And as my eyes are on him, on spiritual things, I lay hold of that which remains is not temporal, not things that go up and down. Smith said, baptizing in water is an emblem of death. And the moment a person is immersed in the water, he's lifted out. But not so with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. To be baptized in the Holy Ghost is every day to be deeper in, never lifted out, never coming out, in captivity, ready for gifts. Are you committed to that? I'm not looking for one encounter, one visitation. I'm looking for a life sold out, surrendered, yielded, where He has taken me captive, where I have given my all. Everything in my life belongs to Him. He now consumes me. He is my obsession. Everything in my life is built around Him and for Him. I am my beloved's and my beloved's is mine. Smith said this, Are you ready? What for? That God can fill you with new life, stimulate you with new fire. He can inflame you with great desire. We are in the midst of the blessing. I want you to be blessed. Your life can change radically today. The things that have so been the fire and driving force, the things that have so held you, you've struggled with, you've so desired freedom from, there's freedom in Him. The devil will always try to persuade you how big, how great he is. He's a giant. He's a strong man. But we've got the stronger strong man who defeated that giant and overcame him. The problems being, you're not tempted of God, but you're tempted as you fall away based on the desires of the treasury of your heart. You had your eyes on the wrong thing. You saw the wrong things. So today, will you allow the Holy Spirit to take you. See, we were baptized into death. That old man in you was supposed to die. All that stuff was supposed to go. Today, come and allow the Holy Spirit to come into the temple, come into the holy place, and purge it, cleanse it, sanctify it. Let Him take full possession, and let Him make the Holy of Holies in your life the place of the highest worship of the living God, not on earthly things, but lifting higher, where everything bows and honors the living God, where the very heart of the Father is revealed, Jesus. Your life now consumed for Him, changed forever by the might of His hand. You no longer look at your insufficiency, but you look towards Him and you lay hold of, and you come with a confidence and a boldness into the treasury of heaven to receive his provision, his sufficiency. And then you realize like Abraham, he's El Shaddai, the more than sufficient one. Now I hope you're liking, I'm wearing one of my um, sweaters here. On it, it's got Jehovah Sabaoth. It's got Rhema, because when you get this Rhema, he is the Lord who fights for you. He is the Lord that fights your battles. And He will do that when the secret place of your heart is His. When your eyes are focused on Him, where He has become the absolute treasure, when you do that, He will so pull you in. 
He will lift you and call you into the treasury of his heart. He will begin to so speak into your life. Rich treasures. And say together, because there has to be a leaving. Abraham, leave. Will you leave the old and press on to the new? Will you go higher today? Will you choose today to say, God, you are my all in all. You're my everything. No turning back. I love that song. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Because you are everything to me, Jesus. You are my all in all. Today, if something in your life you need to repent of, let's do it right now. Let's just come and say, Father, we confess. We come and we put it under the blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you for what was done on the cross, and we stand on the mercy of the cross. We stand that, Jesus, you are more than enough. Your blood was more than enough to redeem me. You bought me back. You brought me, and you lifted me. I thank you, Father, today that they would have such an encounter and that with every day there would be such a pursuit, not just one off, but every day they get up and they go after you. And with each encounter, Father, they go deeper. They get a greater revelation of who you are, of your name in their lives. They don't just become names. You are the Lord, our provider, the Lord, our healer, but they become absolutes words, treasures in you, in each one of us, speaking forth boldly through our lives. Our life's now a living epistle to be read of all men, that my heart belongs to you, that my life belongs to you, Jesus. You have taken the secret place of my life. I don't care what men do. I'm not held in captivity to men or to things or to devils. I'm held by you. I'm in your hands. I belong to you. Any devil holding these people, I just break your authority off their lives in the name of Jesus. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And in the name of Jesus, every knee, every authority, every power, every dominion must bow. Your authority is broken. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, they are raised up and seated with you, Jesus, in heavenly places today. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Let us come forth now, Father, by your hand. Draw them in your great mercy and let them see your loving kindness and your faithfulness. Wash them and cleanse them and give them eyes to see and ears to hear. Let today be the new day, a new beginning. And Holy Spirit, I thank you. In our weakness, we come and we surrender. And I ask you, come and bring forth that prayer. Come and forth and strengthen me in the inner man. Come and show me how to live this life out. I surrender to you. I yield to you. Come and cleanse me, purify, sanctify this vessel. Convict me of anything in my life that needs removed. Father, let me wholly repent of anything I need to uh, repent of. Anything I need to put right, I will put right. So that my life is now in alignment with your heart. You are my everything. Father, I declare that Jesus is my beloved, and my beloved is mine. I belong to him. I am his. I am not my own. I've been bought with a price. And this day, this day, the God who is, who was, and is to come, the Lord my Jesus has made me a king and a priest and lifted me and he's made me to be blessed, to be a blessing in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I pray you're blessed. I pray that this day you would press forth and that you would live a new life. Look at the rest of the videos on the secret place. May they strengthen, encourage and build you up. I ask you if this message has blessed you, would you please like, share, and subscribe? Because as you do, you help us with the algorithms at YouTube and Google to reach more people. The hour is late, and it's time for believers to come into an intimacy with Jesus, to know Him. 
I also ask will you consider joining our prayer partnership team for more information go to robertpairs.org and go to partners cost you nothing you know I believe that the Lord meets the need and he will bring forth just like he did in the time of Jesus financiers people that he will put in the heart to financially bless because I know some people don't have it so we don't charge anybody we don't ask for money I trust that costs money but I trust that God is able to meet that need and he will touch hearts I look at the story of George Mueller I love that man but I know this the most important thing is prayer partners because through prayer partners and I've seen the impact and I can get the testimony of it the lives touched the backsliders brought back when we put in a partnership program because through prayer partners we pray and you'll see it in the Gospels or sorry in the letters of Paul the word comes forth in season and the word has persuasion we need that that is priceless and I believe that as a prayer partner we share in the reward. Your high calling, I don't know what it is. Maybe it is being prayer partners because that's something that some people right now, it's all they can do. And that commitment to lay down lives in prayer and stand in the gap. You share in the reward when we stand before the Lord. Check out some of the testimonies and look at the life changed. Laying hold and receiving that reward is priceless amen well i want to thank you i want you that we're praying for you and i declare that you are blessed that this is the day the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad it because of through him and for him and for his glory remember this james said if you are afflicted you're going through some trial pray you got some good going on rejoice if you are sick call for the elders amen he gave us instruction we forgot some of that that first part you're going through it pray rejoice let's start to do the word amen thank you be blessed be encouraged in the name above all names jesus amen